This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Today we're headed back to Hoenn to give this region's second starter a try. This chicken might have an unfortunately shaped middle evolution, but I'm not one to criticize. I was awkward in high school as well. And when Torchic reaches its final form, it becomes a serious powerhouse. The very first firefighting type. And believe me, this was so cool when it first happened. However, after Generation 5, I feel like there's a lasting trauma now in the Pokemon community. Like. Please don't make this guy a firefighting type. I do not know what will happen if they do. I think the internet might break. I've decided to forego the extensive testing that I did in my last Hoenn video. So in this video, I'll do a regular first attempt and narrate it, and then I'll follow it up with some additional tests or an additional playthrough if I feel that they're necessary. Overall, I like this format more. Also, a lot of you commented, and yes, I really do read them all, so thanks for the feedback. So here are the rules for today's playthrough. You can also find a detailed copy of them in the description if you're curious. Today I'm going to be starting with Torchic and evolving throughout the playthrough. For base stats, Blaziken has 80 HP, 20 attack, 70 defense, 110 special attack, 70 special defense, and 80 speed. The standout stats here are obviously its offensive ones. It has balanced defenses and decent speed. Because I rank my playthroughs in a tier list, I want to give each Pokemon a fair shot at the competition. To do this I use Pokemon with perfect IVs or an ideal hidden power. I also select their nature. On my Sceptile video, Gen 1 or Green left this comment suggesting that I should use a lonely Blaziken for this video. So today I will, and I think it's really fitting because no one wanted to hang out with Combusken anyways. The moves that I have access to today are mostly physical, with the exception of the fire type moves. Some of the standouts for me are Double Kick, Bulk Up, Blaze Kick, Slash, Sky Uppercut, that's like the coolest name for a move also, Sunny Day, Earthquake, Return, Dig, Brick Break, Flamethrower, Rock Tomb, Aerial Ace, and Overheat. After playing so much Generation 1 and Generation 2, it's really nice to have a move pool that just makes sense. There's a lot of moves here that get the same type attack bonus, and then there's moves like Aerial Ace, Rock Tomb, and Earthquake for coverage. Today I decide not to set my hidden power and instead just go into this with a perfect Blaziken. I know that this thing's exceptionally good, and that should be enough. The first rival fight is really easy. I wish that in later generations they forced you to fight the rival before you had a chance to train, like they did in Generation 1. Going into this at level 6 just trivializes the fight. After that, I help Wally catch a Pokemon. I always pray that this isn't going to be shiny. I'm going to have to beat Pokemon Yellow with Weedle and Ditto, so I don't need any additional pain in my life. On the way to Rustboro City, I skip as many trainers as possible. I won't need too many additional levels to defeat Roxanne. Also, I skipped catching HM mules to this point so that these trainers on the bridge don't force me into a double battle. I've learned how to avoid almost all the double battles in this game, with the unfortunate key exception of Tate and Liza. Uh, I don't want to think about that battle yet. I'll deal with it when I get to it. Before facing Roxanne, I make my way through Route 116. There are two potential double battles at the end of this route, but I can talk to one trainer for each of the battles and trigger a single battle instead. After that, Torchic's level 14, and I only need two more levels till it evolves. To gain this experience, I face the trainers in the gym. Geodude might be a rock and ground type, but it has awful special defense, so Ember makes this training fast. Torchic evolves, gains the fighting typing, and learns double kick after defeating the last trainer. Roxanne leads with Geodude. I pick Double Kick and it knocks it out. She sends out her second Geodude and it's also a one hit. We've got to cheer this little Geodude up after the beating that he just took, so uh, like the video to make him happy. Next is Nose Pass. Uh, this is my least favorite Gen 3 Pokemon. As a kid, I always wondered what the strange orifice-like thing was below its nose. I realize now that it's a leg, but it really looks like some strange suction cup mouth. Ah. Uh... Anyways, I take it out over two turns and earn myself the first badge. This is the last generation where the badge boost exists as well. Clearly Game Freak had started to realize that these weren't the best ideas, so they nerfed it in this generation from a 12.5% boost to a 10% boost. The stone badge gives this 10% bonus to my attack stat. Before I head out to sea, I take time to catch my HM mules. After that, it's time for the most frustrating part of any Hoenn playthrough, aside from Tate and Liza, and that's just talking to Mr. Briny. Finally, I manage to do it, and then I'm heading out to the Great Blue Sea. In Duford Town, I grab an old rod so that I can catch a Magikarp for the Tate and Liza fight, and then I head into the gym. 
The Torchic line stacks up so well against all the early gyms. It's strong against Roxanne, gets Peck for Brawly, is strong against Watson's Magneton, resists Flannery, is strong against Dad, and finally it has a weakness to Winona. But at least I have an answer for her Skarmory. Against Brawly, I start the fight off with Focus Energy. It's nice that this move actually works now. Machop uses Bulk Up, and then I use Double Kick. So, uh, I'm just talking to myself back in time now, like, you have access to Peck. It might be a good idea to use it against the Fighting-type Gym Leader. Clearly, I don't get the message though, and I knock the Machop out with a critical hit Ember. Meditate's next, and I double down on my Ember strats. In this case, it actually doesn't matter, because the one damage dealing move that it has is Focus Punch. All you need to do is keep attacking and I'll knock it out. Makuhita's last. I use Double Kick, I do more than half, hit Vital Throws, doing a third, eats its Citrus Berry, and I use Double Kick. So that isn't going to knock it out, unless the second hit gets a crit. And it does. So thanks so much Focus Energy, you did your job. As a reward for defeating Brawly, I get the TM for Bulk Up, and I teach it in the place of Focus Energy right away. Boosting my critical hit rate is nice, but it isn't a guarantee. Stat boosts on the other hand are. I deliver the letter to Steven, and then I head back out to sea. By the way, being on a boat is the only fun way to explore the Great Blue Sea. Just before Slateport City, I briefly train on the beach, before taking care of the grunts in the museum. I pick up some healing items, restore my Combuskin's PP with Nurse Joy, and then I head north. On this route, there's a double battle that's easy to skip by just talking to one of the trainers. After that, I get a rare candy by solving my first trick house puzzle, and then it's time to face Mei. Again, Combuskin is designed to breeze through this fight. I can set up bulk up against her Lombre. It's not really awful, by the way. After that, double kick isn't resisted, and it sweeps through her remaining team members. Next is Watson. I've given Combuskin a Cherry Berry for this fight to counter Static. Voltorb is first. I need to be careful of Rollout and Self-Destruct here. I'll get as many bulk ups as I feel are safe. After three, it's time to attack. A single hit from double kick takes the Pokeball out. Electric follows. I outspeed and knock it out with another single hit. I have super effective damage for the Magneton, so it's also the same story. However, Manectric is gonna outspeed, and I don't have very much health remaining. It goes for Howl, Chicken Kicks, does more than half, gets paralyzed by Static, eats its berry, and then takes the win. So I'm just realizing now that in Generation 3, a lot of different things can happen on one turn. Watson's badge gives my speed stat a 10% boost. This makes sense since it's the electric badge and electric types are usually fast. In Generation 1, Surge's text tells you that his badge gives a speed boost, but it actually doesn't. It boosts your defense instead. In this case, it's nice when things work the way that they're intended. I fight the Wind Straits north of Mauville City, earn myself the Macho Brace. This will be helpful in the case that I need to do some EV training. Uh, thanks for this tip, by the way, RockVent91. It's really fun learning new things in a new generation. And one of those things that I learned is just how good Meryl is as an HM mule. It learns four of the required HMs, so this thing is incredibly useful. In Meteor Falls, I watch what is a cutscene, have a fun gondola ride, I love this little animation, and then I take care of Maxi, grab a meteorite, and head to Laveridge Town. This is the first place that I can stock up on super repels. I could get the charcoal from the herb shop, but of course I don't know that it's there while I'm playing, so I skip it in this playthrough. It's possible to skip all the double battles in Flannery's gym as well. I move around carefully, ensuring that I don't get caught in one accidentally. With the puzzle out of the way, I'm ready to face her. She opens with Nummel, one of her weaker Pokemon, and this game design is very convenient for Combuskin's use of bulk up. I set up twice and then knock the Nummel out. Slugma gets crit, the camera up goes down in a single turn of double kick, and last is her ace, Torkoal. Double Kick does half damage with two hits, the Torkoal sets up Sunny Day, and then I knock it out. At level 36, Combuskin sheds this unfortunately rounded form for the more powerful angular form that is Blaziken. Fitting because the sponsor of this video is Squarespace. They happen to know at least four things about angles, and many more about excellent aesthetics. Squarespace is a platform that I use myself, and it's a great way to build a professional looking website without any experience coding or developing. I've saved so much time by using their intuitive website builder to add photos, audio, and video to my sites. The platform also lets you create members areas that allow content creators to monetize their work and their expertise. You can connect your social media accounts to display posts from them, or to do the opposite, push website content through your favorite social media channels. 
Finally, I'm a big fan of data. Uh, hopefully you will have realized that by watching my videos. And the analytic tools on Squarespace are one of my favorite features. After all, data is what helps us analyze and improve ourselves. I can't recommend Squarespace more, so if you're thinking about setting up a website, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash scottsthoughts to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Now, let's get back to the playthrough. I find it really fitting that I level up to 36 so that Combuskin evolves after defeating the Fire-type Gym Leader. It reaches its final form here, which is Blaziken. As a kid, I honestly didn't really appreciate this thing. Fighting types just weren't aesthetically appealing, but I am curious how all of you felt about it. So in the modern day, I do realize that Blaziken is great, and I actually really like its design today. But there is one thing about Generation 3 that I really dislike, and that's the fact that there's so much backtracking after defeating Flannery. Either you backtrack through Meteor Falls, or you backtrack through the center of the map. I think this one's better because then I get strength along the way. Honestly, I think that you should have just gotten Fly though after defeating Flannery, that would make much more sense. Norman is next. Since I have a type advantage, I'm really not worried here. First is Spinda, and I honestly thought this thing was a bad Pokemon, so I'm just like, yeah, I'll just set up Bulk up here, it seems like a free setup for me, right? Nope, it uses Teeter Dance, confusing Blaziken. Okay, so this is really annoying. I don't want to set up any more now that I'm confused, so I knock it out with Double Kick. Figuroth is next. I use Double Kick and I take it down. Against Lanoon, Blaziken finally damages itself in Confusion and then Norman sets up Belly Drum. But I'm still faster, I snap out of Confusion and take it out. Slacking is last. I've got this. I use Double Kick, it does massive damage taking the Sloth into red health, and then it retaliates with Counter. Okay, so that was really bad. It took me out in a single hit. The fix here is simple. I need two turns of setup instead of just one. To avoid Teeter Dance, I can knock the Spinda out first turn. Vigoroth can't knock me out, so I can set up there against it. After that, Double Kick sweeps. My dad gives me the badge that boosts my defense by 10%. With it, I grab Surf, grab a rare candy while backtracking, and then get some citrus berries, use a bed to heal. There is a healing bed in this place. It might not be a boat, but it's a, it's a great place to sleep and rest up a little bit. I don't know where I'm going with this. I just like, Get back to the script. <laughs> I defeat some villains, defeat a rival, get fly, grab a rare candy, get the Devon scope, and then I face a Kecleon, and uh, it's green, so I use Blaze Kick. Well done. Before the gym, I deposit my team. By doing this, I can prevent all the double battles in this gym. After solving the puzzles, I face Winona. She leads with Swablu. I set up Bulk Up, it uses Safeguard, and Blaziken bulks up again, uh, like my girlfriend going to the gym in the morning. And then Swablu uses Parish Song. Okay, I did not know that it had that. How unfortunate. I can't knock her team out fast enough, and that's my second reset. The answer once again is simple, just don't set up on the Swablu. Despite knowing that, I still do one turn of Bulk Up, so I really risked it here. I decide to finish setting up on the following Skarmory, but turns out this is also a bad idea. It has the most powerful move in the world, Sand Attack. I don't want it landing more of those, so I use Blaze Kick, and luckily it connects and the Airplane Bird faints. Tropius is a one hit. By the way, I can't wait to do a Tropius playthrough. I'm so excited for that. And then the uh, Troll Bird comes out, Pelipper, and it slows the fight down. This thing is so annoying. It just loves to use Protect and then get Hyper Potions. It doesn't even do any damage, it just delays me. Altaria is last, and Blaziken finishes it with a single hit. So I've earned my sixth badge, and now the seventh badge is next. Ah, uh, I'm not looking forward to this. On the route heading south from Fort Tree City, I realized that I forgot to withdraw my HM mules, so I can't surf across this little pond and pick up the rare candy. Guess I've got to backtrack for this one. I get to Lily Cove City, grab my team, and then come back for the rare candy. After that, I have the first mandatory double battle of the entire playthrough. I'm not so worried about how I approach these fights. My solo Pokemon is so overleveled anyways. In the future, I'll probably catch my Magikarp earlier on, but in the end, I'm not concerned if I don't. After Archie leaves, there's a rare candy up here on the summit, and then I go back down to the bottom of the mountain, and there's one just across the water. Now it's time for the Magma Hideout, and in here is the best item in the entire game, the PP Max. Maxi, uh, that's fitting I guess? Maxi is the boss of this area. He leads with Mightyena, lowering my attack with Intimidate. 
I recover with bulk up, I have my speed lowered with scary face, and then my attack raised twice with swagger. I get another bulk up in, and then I proceed to snap out of confusion and take out the rest of his team with ease. I uh, accidentally used blaze kick along the way, so like, whoops. Oh well, this fight was very easy. So I've made it through one hideout now, and you know what we needed? More hideouts. Today I'm thinking ahead, and Tate and Liza are next, and they're going to be Blaziken's ultimate test. So to level up for them, I decide to face all the Aqua Grunts in here. In Tate and Liza's gym, I continue my training by facing all the trainers. Uh, except the guy with the wall buffet. Counter is uh, not getting me again. I'm level 49 when I arrive at them for the first time, so let's see how this goes. Turn 1, bulk up, Magikarp gets completely wrecked, and Claydol hits Blaziken with Earthquake. Blaze Kick almost knocks out the Zatu, but then they finish me on the next turn. With how this fight played out in the last two videos, I've kind of made the assumption that the answer here is training, especially because Blaziken has a type disadvantage here. I tested coming back after using all my rare candies, and even at level 56 it seems outside of the realm of possibilities. So I guess it's time for too much water and for too much training. The nice thing about all this is that I can clear out all the trainers on the way to Sky Pillar so that I don't run into them when I backtrack through this section of the game for the storyline. Then during this training, I had a realization. I went into this with a perfect Blaziken, and that means that my hidden power is a dark type. At level 55, I discontinue my training and try again. I one-shot the Zatu, take almost half from Earthquake, and then I fail to knock the Claydol out next. It gets a potion, and then Blaziken goes down. Okay, this is close. If I can get enough damage to one hit, then I can do it. At level 59, I try again. Claydol is now a one-shot. Okay, great, I can do this. I take the Zatu out, use Hidden Power on Solar Rock, it survives, uses Sunny Day, Lunatone sets up Calm Mind. Okay, that's bad. Hidden Power won't do as much damage now. I get put to sleep and that's that, but I know that I can do it at this level. I try again, but this time I'm not getting the roll that I need to knock the clade all out. Instead of just bashing my head against this fight over and over again until I get the roll, I'm just going to use three rare candies so that it's ensured that I'm going to knock it out. At level 62, I one-shot the clade all, Zatu one-shots the Magikarp, and Lunatone comes out. I target it because it can put me to sleep, and Hidden Power gets the job done. Soul Rock comes out, and Zatu starts to set up Calm Mind. I can't let that go any further, so I target the Zatu. It survives with the Sliver. Instead of hitting the Zatu again, I decide to take the Soul Rock out of the equation so that I'm only facing one Pokemon at a time. When I finally start hitting the Zatu, it gets healed again, but eventually I manage to take it out. Tate and Liza are no more, and their badge gives me Blaziken's final boost to its special stats. Now it's story time, both in the game and in my video. When I was a kid, I remember seeing ads on TV for Ruby and Sapphire, and I was so excited for double battles. However, when I finally got my copy of Ruby, I was shocked how few of them were a part of the game. It really felt like Game Freak added a new feature but didn't want to go all out with it because they weren't sure how it was going to be received. In Emerald, they really fixed this problem, and now double battles are everywhere, but they also made them optional so that you don't have to do them, except for some of these double battles like this one here alongside Steven. I have to say that the lack of double battles certainly influenced how I perceived these games growing up, and how I look back on them now. I'm glad that I got this new opportunity to play them again on this channel and rediscover the gems that they truly are. With mom and dad calmed down, I can finally finish off the last gym. Wan, in theory, should be a challenge for Blaziken, but I'm overleveled and Love Disc provides the perfect opportunity to set up bulk up. After that, I sweep his team with Sky Uppercut. By the way, Blaziken gets some cool move names, like I know I mentioned it before, but like Blaze Kick and Sky Uppercut? Just perfect. There is a fight next with Wally in Victory Road, but I don't really consider this a major battle. He isn't very hard and I can just make it through his team with ease. It wasn't until the remakes that this Wally fight really started sticking out in my mind. Uh, by the way, the Wally remake music is awesome. I just really wish that the loop was longer. It's like 8 bars long and that just feels way too short. It gets repetitive really quickly. So, it's time for the League. How will Blaziken do? If this was Ruby and Sapphire, I'd be extremely confident, but the fact that Wallace is last gives me pause. His team is exceptionally strong against me, and Sceptile struggled there, even with a type advantage. Without one, I'm not sure how I'm going to manage, but I don't want to spend extra time training now. So, do you think that I can do it? Let's find out. Sydney opens with Mightyena. 
Uh, it's sort of a strange lead for an Elite Four member. Intimidate lowers my attack, I use bulk up, and then I get sprayed with sand. Ah, rip accuracy. Sky Uppercut still hits and takes the doggo out. Shift Trees next. I try for Blaze Kick, miss, and it uses Swagger. Next, I'm lucky because I don't hit myself in Confusion, and my next Blaze Kick incinerates the tree. Absol time. Blaziken snaps out of its confusion, connects with Sky Uppercut, and the disastrous dog has a disastrous day. For the final two members of his team, I continue to get good accuracy luck. Take that, Sand Attack. You're not slowing me down today. Phoebe's next. Hidden Power Dark is really helpful here. I use it to one-shot the majority of her team, with the exception of one Dusclops and the Sableye. So that's another easy fight. And quite honestly, the next one isn't going to be more of a challenge. Glacia has a type disadvantage to Blaziken. Her lead is CeeLo, that's making things worse for her. It gives me a turn to set up bulk up. With my chicken beefed up, I uppercut my way to a swift victory. Now, it's time for Drake. Out of the Elite Four, he has the best chance to stop Blaziken's spree. But working against him is the fact that he sends out Shellgon first. It loves to use Protect, and knowing this, I set up bulk up four times before I finally knock it out with a single Sky Uppercut. Along the way, the Shellgon did lower my speed with Rock Tomb though. This lets Flygon move first with Earthquake, dealing one quarter before it faints. Altaria time. But the Blue Dragon doesn't stand a chance. Kingdra follows, my chicken is faster, and takes it out. Now, this is the Pokemon that I've been most worried about. Salamence. Intimidate lowers my attack, it moves first with Dragon Claw, gets a critical hit, and takes Blaziken down to 57 health. I use Sky Uppercut, metaphorically cross my fingers, and it does it. I've made it to Wallace. To prepare, I give Blaziken a Petra Berry and use my remaining rare candies. Toxic can be a nightmare in this fight after all. Whale Lords first. I looked at his move pool while I was playing this fight, and I decided that I could set some bulk ups here, and then it uses Water Spout, connects with Blaziken, and knocks it out immediately. So uh, I may have misread the move pool and thought that this move was Water Sport. Uh, my bad. So setting up there is pretty disastrous. I try to one hit the Whale Lord instead, but it survives, gets a full restore, I miss, and it connects with another water spout. Ah. At least this one wasn't from max HP. Ludicolo's next. I try for Blaze Kick, but I miss, and my second one finally connects. The sombrero wearing duck thing sets up double team. Actually, I have no idea what this thing is. Should probably look it up. Blaziken still manages to connect and eventually knock it out. The ground fish goes down over two turns, and that leads to Milotic. I was really hoping for the Oko here, but I don't get it, and I faint as a result. What I did notice during that last fight, though, was that Ludicolo was spamming double team. Maybe I can set up against it instead of trying to attack. That way I'll have more damage for the Wishcash and the Milotic when I return to them. But in the next fight, the Ludicolo goes for Surf instead. Ah. With one turn of setup, I move on, and I can one-hit the Wishcash, and a crit helps against Milotic. Okay, Tentacruel time. But it's bulky, survives, and knocks my chicken out. Okay, time for a new move set. If I use Sunny Day, I can cut the power of water type moves and set up more easily. The unfortunate thing here though is that Whale Lord loves to just use Rain Dance whenever I set up the sun, so this doesn't go well for me. Maybe I need to get one lucky turn of setup against the Whale Lord and then one more against Ludicolo, but a massive water spout connects and messes me up. That forces me to go all out offense, and again I get defeated at the Tentacruel. Now, the uh, hopelessness started to set in. What can I do to get past Tentacruel? Sunny Day doesn't help, Toxic isn't an issue in this fight, Bulk Up doesn't have enough time to get set up, and then in fight 7 I realized how I can solve this problem. I can use Earthquake against the Tentacruel. But first, I need to get to it. I set up once, and then I start to sweep. Whale Lord, Ludicolo, Wishcash, and Milotic all faint in a single hit each. Tentacruel time. I use Earthquake, and it does it. That means there's only one Pokemon left, and it's Gyarados. Earthquake won't work here, so I only have Blaze Kick or Sky Uppercut, and it resists both of them. I'll probably need two turns of damage here. Actually, I'll need three. Wallace uses a full restore when Gyarados is in red, and I get it back down here, however it ends up finishing Blaziken off with an Earthquake. I think that I can do this, I just need one or two more bulk ups. I don't get them in my ninth fight and Blaziken falls again. Tenth time's the charm, maybe? This time I get two bulk ups against the Whale Lord, so that puts me in a good position going into the fight against Gyarados. I brought Sunny Day with me to cut Surf's power. I do more than half this time, I survive Earthquake, alright, I've got this. But then Sky Uppercut misses and Gyarados knocks me out. 
Okay, the 11th fight, this has to be it. But then I forget to use Sunny Day and the Gyarados knocks me out with Surf. Okay, so I really need the Sun. That way Wallace is gonna use Earthquake and it's doing less than Surf. However, there is another way around this, and that's more setup at the Ludicolo. Then Sunny Day, and after that Sweep. I just need to get lucky and hit against the double team. I do, and now I have more attack for the Gyarados. Maybe I can one hit it? Blaziken uses Sky Uppercut and gets the job done. It finishes the league with a time of 2 hours, 30 minutes, and 57 seconds, with 18 resets at level 75 with a game time of 8 hours and 36 minutes. But the ultimate challenge is still waiting for me in Meteor Falls. Before facing Steven, I teach Blaziken Flamethrower with the TM from the game corner. I hope that it can do it now, because I don't have any more rare candies left. Skarmory is first. I use bulk up turn 1 and get hit with Aerial Ace for 1 quarter. I retaliate with a turn 2 flamethrower and knock the steel type out. Agron's next. Sky Uppercut does 4 times damage which is more than enough to finish it off. Next, Steven chooses his ace, Metagross. I was worried here but flamethrower actually does enough. Am I gonna sweep him? Well, not sweep it because Ormaldo is really annoying. Steven heals it so many times with full restores and then eventually it faints. Okay, his clay doll's next. Oh, and I don't really have anything that's good against it. Flamethrower is my best bet here because it resists Sky Uppercut and has Levitate for Earthquake. My fire does less than half damage and the ancient Pokemon knocks my chicken out. The first fight against him was inspiring though, I think this is more than doable. I just need a solution for the clay doll. Since most of his team are already one hits, I decide that I can set up a little bit more on the Skarmory. I can take at least two aerial aces. I get three bulk ups off and then Skarmory uses Toxic. My Pecha Berry heals it, but I can't risk getting poisoned again. It's time to sweep. With Blaziken, it's really satisfying knocking out all of these incredibly tanky Pokemon in one hit each. At Armaldo, I miss, so it softens me up a little bit before the following Clay Doll. Please, just one hit. I use Sky Uppercut because it got the attack boosts, it does more than half, Clay Doll lands an Earthquake, Blaziken survives, and finishes it off. All that remains is Cradley. I use Sky Uppercut, and it goes down. Blaziken did it. 2 hours, 35 minutes, and 40 seconds, with 19 resets at level 76, with a game time of 8 hours and 49 minutes. On its first attempt, it outperformed Sceptile's second attempt result. Granted, I am new to these games, so my learning is happening very quickly, maybe it just outperformed because of that. Still, I think that 19 resets is too much. How well could Blaziken perform if I sky uppercut this number in half? But can I even do that? Or is it just sneaking by with good luck? I wanted to find out, so I decided to do a second playthrough. For it, I understand now that Hidden Power Dark is good against Tate and Liza. However, Hidden Power Ghost is going to be better, because it's physical, allowing it to receive buffs from bulk up. It's a, a strange day when Ghost and fighting moves are working together. Roxanne is easy, just be level 16, evolve, learn double kick, and then this fight's consistent. Against Brawly, I get the opportunity to redeem myself using Peck. Uh, but do I take it? That's the real question. Uh, yeah I do. <laughs> I'm not going to make that mistake again. He's much easier with super effective damage. Watson is still simple because it looks like the Manectric is programmed to use Howl first turn. That gives me an extra turn to knock it out. Oh, ah, uh, unless Paralysis from Static stops me? Manectric goes for Shockwave, but I survive with two hit points. Okay, please just attack and don't be paralyzed. Combuskin does it, and with that I've won. One thing about Flannery that's a bit annoying is that Nummel knows Earthquake. Bulk Up's perfect here though because it fortifies my defense so that I can take the magnitudes as they come. Even magnitude 9 isn't enough for me to break a sweat. Norman's easy now that I know that I can set up on the Vigoroth. Against Winona, I end up losing one time again. Setting up on Skarmory, I get hit with Sand Attack and then Pelipper takes me down with Water Gun. The error that I was making here is trying to set up on the Skarmory. If I knock it out immediately with Blaze Kick, I can just set up on the Tropius that follows and then this fight's much more consistent. And now I'm back at Tate and Liza. I go into the fight at level 55, that's a lot lower than I was last time. I take my first turn to set up Bulk Up, and that prepares me to sweep their team with Hidden Power Ghost. Claydol is now a one hit, Lunatone is a one hit as well, Zatu sets up Calm Mind, this is another reason that Hidden Power Ghost is better, I can now take this bird out with a single hit even after it sets up. All that's left is Soul Rock, and my ghost move takes it out. So no resets on this fight this time. 
with Sceptile. Juan actually surprised me with a victory in my second playthrough, but this time he doesn't get it, and Blaziken takes a swift victory. For Sydney, I realized that I didn't even need to set up, I was just wasting time. I'm so overleveled and my moves do so much damage that I can just sweep. The same is true for Phoebe. I do set up against Glacia, but this might be overkill too. Now, Drake could have stopped me before, so I was worried going into this fight, but apparently I didn't need to be. I finished the Salamence off, and I'm back at Wallace. Here, I have a new strategy, and I needed one if I had any hope of defeating him four levels lower. I can teach Aerial Ace in the place of Blaze Kick. This gives me a consistent way to deal super effective damage to Ludicolo after it sets up double team. I lose two fights quickly, but on the third, I'm able to get set up against this green monster. Aerial Ace finishes it, and I sweep his team up to Gyarados. I use Sky Uppercut, it does so much damage, and Blaziken finishes the league. Now, will my lower level impact the fight against Steven Stone? Skarmory's now dealing slightly more damage with Aerial Ace. Because I'm a lower level, I'm trying to set up more bulk ups to compensate. This is the wrong choice though. It leads to reset after reset after reset. Then I figure it out. Blaziken is already good enough. Flamethrower does enough damage to KO the key Pokemon, so I only need one use of bulk up. Armaldo is going to be a 2 hit, but if I play offensively, I can arrive at it with full health anyways. I take it down, and then it's clayed all time. Sky Uppercut first turn, it takes me into red, and then I finish it with Flamethrower. All that's left is Cradley, but I can knock it out easily. Blaziken clocks in with a time under 2 hours. 1 hour, 58 minutes and 34 seconds, with 10 resets at level 73 with a game time of 7 hours and 11 minutes. 7-Eleven conveniently, where all my Pokemon cards are from. I do think that I could have outperformed here even more if I had figured the Steven fight out faster. In that case I think I would have clocked in under 1 hour and 55 minutes, but I'm still satisfied with this result. And now I'm ready to introduce my Hoenn playthrough tier list. Blaziken is the top performer so far, Sceptile is in second, and Butterfree is a distant third. I'll have to redo Butterfree's playthrough at some point though, because I didn't do a second run with it, while both Sceptile and Blaziken got one. Up next in Hoenn is obviously Swampert. The speedrunning community already knows how good it is, but without items, and with me in the driver's seat, will it be able to dethrone Blaziken? Uh, soon we'll find out. Also, will I remember its ability? Unlike with Blaziken and Sceptile. Like, subscribe, ring the chime echo, and leave a comment because I gotta read them all. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Also, thanks to all my patrons for their continued support. It means the world to me. If you want ad-free videos, access to a private Discord server, and the occasional exclusive content, consider supporting me too. Link's in the description. If you've made it this far, you're incredible. Now, it's bloopers time. Okay, it's time for retakes. Let's do this. Flannery, I forgot to record. Oopsies. <laughs> So I think this is the first time I have uh, just skipped a gym leader entirely and then when I was doing audio editing I was like wait where's the Flannery stuff and I'm like looking at the original file and like oh there just isn't any I just forgot her completely huh. She opens with Nummel Nummel Camel yeah Nummel She opens with Nummel the game design that forces gym leaders to start with one of their weaker Pokemon is very convenient for Combuskin's use of blah 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 oh bulk up. <laughs> no. The reward for defeating Brawly is the TM for bulk up. I teach it in the place of focus and focus energy. <laughs> ah, come on. Watson's badge gives me a speed stat boost of 10. Watson's bad. Ugh, Watson's bad. It felt like he was bad after that fight. I'm speeding through this script. Oh, it's only, I'm only three pages out of 10. I thought I was further than that. <laughs> I thought I was like halfway. Don't get too excited. I got distracted by Twitter. I was just like, I was recording and then I just looked down. And I'm like, ah, I'm gonna look at Twitter. <laughs> what are people saying on Twitter? Stop it. <laughs> Don't look at Twitter. Actually, follow me on Twitter, by the way, uh, at, Psychic, at Psychic Flying. That's the uh, Butterfree and Venomoth's typing, of course. Wish Cash goes down over two turns. Wish Cash. Oh, that's hard. Wish Cash. Oh, God, I feel so silly saying this thing. Wish, wish, wish Cash. I guess that's how you say it. I was saying it right this whole time, right? Maybe not. Wish Cash goes down. I feel so silly saying that name. Wish Cash? I should just say the ground fish. I'll just say that. The ground fish goes down. My fire does less than half. And the ancient Pokin, no Pokin knocks the chicken out. Ah, Pokin chicken. Pokin chicken. Ah. Gotta open a restaurant. Pokin chicken. One thing about Flannery that's a bit annoying is that the Numel, 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 I don't even know. Camel. Numel. Camel. Numel. I think it's Numel. 